for many that have gone through this, are going through this extended, what feels like the Lord's being really hard on you. You know, he's, why Lord, why so much? I don't see this happening to everybody else. We're going to consider God's motives, just like what we do when we test the spirit of words and of teachers and of prophets. We test the spirit because the mind of Christ understands, let's say, not the entirety of why God is doing something, but we're able to say whether or not this word, this action, this person, whether or not it glorifies God, because that's what we're here to do. So likewise, we can look at our suffering and think about considering the word, think about God's glory here. Well, why am I going through all this suffering? And a lot of people jump to Job. Well, obviously God wants to give me a double portion, you know. And, um, you know, we have to remember Job never, Job didn't know the story of Job. So it wasn't Job's narrative that, well, I just got to get through this suffering. I'm going to get that double portion, right? So generally when we think that way, it's already wrong. And surely I don't need to explain to us why, you know it's greedy, it's selfish. Because why? Because we're here, number one, to glorify God. And number two, to put others before ourselves. So now put your suffering in that context. That's what I meant by testing, like knowing God's motives here. Which I mean just by why is he allowing me to go through this? Because understanding can really shift your perception and make things a lot easier. So then we're not fighting against the grain, but we could even go in the flow when we're going upstream. Hallelujah. That's by the grace of God. So we think about why are we going through much suffering? Why is the warfare so heavy? Why does it, you know, sometimes you could even think I'm doing something wrong. I, I Maybe God is displeased with me. Maybe I'm out of alignment. Maybe, you know, maybe there's just... Witches everywhere that have my the demonic altars, you know. People get pretty fantastical when we just need to be still. We have the mind of Christ, so we think. We think. And what we can get from this is, since everything is to glorify God, all that we do, what God puts us through is going to, at some point, glorify Him. And number two, we do things for people before ourselves. So, well, many of you are birthing. What the Lord is creating within many of you, because suffering produces what? A host of abundance, perseverance, hope, many fruits, long suffering, all sorts of spiritual wealth. So the Lord is producing in many of you what you are going to need in order for other people. A lot of Christians don't want to hear that because as much as we are to put others before ourselves, doesn't matter. Let's just get that out of the way. Let's say that a great, great many could care less about other people are on this walk for blessings and yada, yada, yada. That's their business. And it's foolery because the Lord hears hearts. He knows motives and he ain't going to be fooled. He cannot. God will not be mocked. Anyway. So for many of you, as the Lord matures, you start, he widens your, your picture, right? And you start to realize, you start to have a heart like him. And that heart for him, that's for other people, man. And he is birthing within you so much love. And the most beautiful of things that he's birthing at this in this hour, in many, is hope. And do you know that that hope is not just going to carry you through, it is going to carry others. Everyone who has a calling to speak or to share needs to stand up, needs to speak out. The enemy is heavy, heavy, doing heavy work right now. He's got paperwork trying to keep up with the people that the Lord is sending out, sending out, sending out. And the enemy is coming against many to shut them up, sit them down, to break their hope. Because if you got hope, Not much can kill hope. 
Those who are, are learning what hope is have at one time in their lives been hopeless. Hopelessness and despair, that leads many to take their own lives. This is the depths that have been carved out of those who in this hour, the Lord is bringing up to be leaders. Are we starting to come into the realization of the burdens of God's leaders? Of what it truly means to be in the fivefold ministry, to have spiritual gifts, because of course this world likes to, many in this world got a dirty spirit of prediction that I'm a prophet. It's a lot of things going on out here. And the thing is, it's going to be allowed. It's going to be allowed until it's not. So you, God's people in general, especially those that are being raised up to be leaders, have to understand that just like Jeremiah was come against by Hananiah and the people totally backed Hananiah because Hananiah was saying God's gonna free us but that wasn't the truth at that time you know people will say anything to make it sound good to the people so you have the burden of, of trying to not trying to but of actually doing the work of the Lord in the context of knowing that you're going to be come against, warfare is going to be heavy. You're going to be stripped of everything. And you're going to have to have hope. And you're going to see some pretty dark things. And you're going to go some pretty dark places. I mean, tell me which of the disciples, the apostles, didn't, right? This is your calling. It is the glory of God, for the glory of God that Job was sifted. For the glory of God. For Job was carrying his mantle of beautiful faith without question. He wasn't waiting at a double portion. The disciples didn't know that we'd be talking about them thousands of years later. David didn't realize that Goliath, his slaying Goliath, would have this huge repercussion. The leaders just do what the Lord is telling them to do. One of the most powerful things that a leader can have is hope. Any leader can be persuasive and, you know, do really evil things. I mean, think of Hitler. You know, but godly leaders, they have hope. Everything's against them. I mean, think about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was a believer. And in many of his sermons, many of his speeches, rather, he gave glory to God. And one thing he had was hope at a time when what he was saying sounded ridiculous it sounded ridiculous and he didn't get rebellious he didn't say you know blacks overtake the whites ah! that's not God's people he had hope I have a dream that's hope and one day it would come to pass one day it would come to pass I believe Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a prophet I do and I believe that I have a dream speech was a prophecy from God. I do. Because it was never God's intentions that we should look at each other, you know, or judge each other from in these ridiculous ways with color and such. Absurd, especially in the body. But we did. And he knew that. And just like the, the Jews in Egypt were enslaved, black people were enslaved. The Lord doesn't take too kindly to bullies. Hope was what he had. And hope was what he spoke. And many of you leaders wear all these gifts. The greatest being hope, love. You're going to say things that other people aren't saying. And you might doubt yourself like Jeremiah did. When Hananiah spoke against him, Jeremiah's like, well... God told me that 
we got to stay basically <laughs> oppressed by Nebuchadnezzar. I wish, that, you know, he's maybe thinking he got it wrong. And that's, you know, that's one of the worst things we can do. So you leaders, know who you are. Know who sent you. Because you have a hard task at hand. You have a hard task at hand. And there, listen, there's no more time to pull a Moses. There's no more time to say, God, not me. I'm not good enough. I'm an introvert. It's not about you. It's not about how you are. The Spirit of the Lord will give you the words. He'll give you boldness. He'll give you unction. He'll give you assignments. He'll send you people. People who want to hear what he is speaking through you. And sometimes you'll become against. And with your hope, you'll do what? You'll continue speaking to no one, to everyone, to leaders, all colors, all creeds, all ages, every nation. That is what the leaders are being raised for.